homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, one of my youngins bought a brand new lawnmower, but he bought it at one of those places that take back returns. So the lawnmower was returned. Now, it's a 2021 model. Uh, Lowe sells them. It's a Craftsman lawnmower. I'll put the number up here. It's a Craftsman lawnmower. And uh, it's 11 and a half horsepower, and he bought the mower for a thousand dollars. But when he got it home, it leaks gas. Well, that's probably why it was returned. Okay, so we're going to go up and uh, replace the carburetor on it. Now, I'll explain why we replaced the carburetor when we look at the carburetor. But there are a whole bunch of numbers that go with that carburetor. This is a uh, Briggs & Stratton engine. And normally, if you bought an original Briggs & Stratton carburetor, it would be about a thousand, or not a thousand, a hundred dollars. It cost you close to a hundred dollars to get one. Well, you don't have to do that. Uh, all you have to do is have the parts manual that goes with your lawnmower. You can go to the Briggs & Stratton website Put the model number in for the engine, and it'll tell you what carburetor goes with it. Whether And this one happens to be a 590-400, or 590-400, okay, 590-400. And that's a common carburetor for all the way up to 21 horsepower. So there are a lot of Briggs & Stratton engines with that carburetor on them. So... I'm going to put all of the numbers, not up here, but I'll put them down in the, in the thing of all of the different carburetors that this same carburetor fits on. Uh, an aftermarket carburetor, I think it was $24. And then he bought a little cutoff valve to go with it so that because it didn't have a shutoff valve, we've got it clamped off with a, with a set of vice grips. He bought a shutoff valve to go with it, so we will put... Uh, the carburetor and a shutoff valve in and show you how to do that. It's not rocket science. Anybody can do it once you've seen it done once. All you have to have, you don't have to have a ton of tools either. You need a basic socket set, both standard and metric. You need a flat blade screwdriver for prizing. That's all you need it for. Now, you can have a set of vice grips like this, a little set of vice grips, or just a pair of slip joint pliers for putting the clamps on, putting the hose clamps on. That's all you have to have these for. I like to use these loppers for cutting that, cutting that, uh, that uh, fuel line, that plastic fuel line. These do such a great job. It's just one little snip and done. Uh, you can use your pocket knife if you don't have a set of these. And then a little bitty tiny set of uh, set of uh, needle nose pliers. Because there are some little bitty things there that you need to take loose from the carburetor. You can probably get away with it if your fingers are nimble. But my old fat fingers ain't too nimble anymore. So I use a little set of pliers. And then finally, a set of metric box end wrenches. That's it. That's all the tools that's required to change a carburetor on this Craftsman riding mower. So let's get on up and I'll show you what was wrong with it. So I'm going to drive up to his house and we'll get it worked on. Okay, here's our mower. It's a Craftsman. T100. It's basically a brand new mower. Uh, looks pretty good. But what happened was, I'll show you. This is the shutoff valve for it, and it was on the bottom of the carburetor. Now here's the carburetor right here. Okay. There's the carburetor. And uh, this was on here right there. 
underneath it. Okay, it was right there. But what happened was this, the carburetor bowl is stripped out. And apparently that's probably what it got returned for. That carburetor bowl being stripped out. So what we're going to do today is we are going to uh, fix that and change out that carburetor. Now I could go ahead and put some, say some uh, uh, JB weld on this and force it back up in there and let it dry and all that stuff. But the truth is a carburetor for this is less than 30 bucks. So it's a whole lot easier to replace the carburetor than to try and repair that bowl. It's just a, really it's a matter of a, a waste of time. Now the first thing we did, of course, was it started leaking when this came out. So we fastened off this uh, fuel line and we'll be cutting that off and putting a fuel cut off. That's what the first thing we're going to do. Uh, here's our little, here's our little uh, fuel cut off switch. We're going to put it right there in this system. So we're going to get that cut off. That's the first thing we're going to do. And then we'll get this uh, cover off where you can see the, uh, see the stuff. But first, I want to take off this cowl because it's going to be in our way. Well, the beautiful part is it doesn't have to go way back. So it just has to pull up off of these little things here. And uh, we'll pull that up and take it off and just set it to the side. Yeah, it should just lift straight up. There it goes. You can just set it off there to the side. And now we don't have to worry about that being in our way. Alright. Now we just need to cut this hose here between the vice grips that got it clamped off. And there it is. Of course there's going to be a little bit of stuff. Now you could have cut that off with a knife or just whatever. Now there are some little clamps. And there they are. You just compress those clamps. You can't do it with your fingers. You'll have to use uh, vice grips or a, or a pair of pliers or anything like that to get those grip down. And when they're pushed down then you just put them over the hose. And now you can put your uh, this on. It just pushes back in the hose. Now bring that clamp up there and then you can twist it a little and there you go. That clamp's caught. It really needs to be back a little, just a little tad, but it'll be all right right there. Uh, go ahead and put a clamp on the other side. <coughs> okay, then push your hose back up on there. Okay. And let it off and there we go now we have something where we can turn the fluid off and not have to have the vice grips on there we're gonna go ahead and leave them on there for just in case but for right now that's what we're going to use now it's time to get the air breather off because the carburetor is right here under the air breather Now the carburetor is actually right here. Right here is where the air breather comes in. And you'll notice that the air breather is captured by these little, these little clips. But one of the problems here is that uh, the way this is sitting, this is over top of the carburetor where you can't get to, where you can't get to the top of the carburetor to take the, the connections loose so we have to take this cowl off and the cowl comes off by just taking off a bolt here a bolt on this side and then these two bolts right here and that whole thing will come off probably 
uh, 13 millimeters or Lucy, so we're going down. There you go. And what was it? 10 millimeter. So it is 10 millimeter. So we'll get these four bolts off, then we'll come back to you. Okay, about to get the last bolt out. Now, we don't know if these bolts in the back go all the way through or if they're just uh, partials, but it looks like, okay, what do we got here? We're still hung up on something. Uh, we're hung up on these. Surely we're not going to have to take that gas tank off to get that out of there. Okay, and looking at that, is it completely loose? Oh, got that one out. See if we can get this one out. There isn't a lot of room in there. It's still solid over here is my problem. Yeah, is it? Oh, there's a there's a screw there. There's a screw right there. It's a it's a nut. Probably uh, five sixteenths. There's a nut right here that goes into the top of the carburetor. Looks like right there. So we'll take that one loose. Five sixteenth too big. Five sixteenths is too big. What was it? It's uh, one fourth. Huh? One fourth. Okay, so it's just a quarter inch nut, quarter inch bolt. Now let's see if this will lift off. Now, now you might be able to get that out. Yep. Be hard to get back in there, but we'll make it. All right. There we go, comes off. Now we can get to the top of the carburetor, which was the real problem here. We need to be able to get to the top of the carburetor so we could take these loose. Now what we want to do is compare the other carburetor to this one and see if they match up. Spark plug. Yeah, this is a single spark plug engine. Now, let's have a look and see. Turn it around. You'll see that the two carburetors are basically identical, except for these little valves here that may wind up needing to be adjusted, but generally, those don't have to be adjusted at all. So, it's the same. You got one, two holes. You got one, two holes here. So, it looks like we got this Everything looks the same. Looks like this carburetor is usable with several different engines. So we'll go ahead and start getting it apart. Now you want to pay close attention here. This has to come out, but what you'll see a lot of times these are stuck way down in there. So sometimes they're hard to get out. But you start off by taking off this little spring. Now, to get the little spring, you've got to have a little bitty screwdriver, or a little bitty uh, pair of pliers. And then, once you've got the carburetor that off, then these other two things can come off after you take the carburetor, because you'll have to slew the carburetor around. So, we'll go ahead and take the spring off. Now, you need to get on the long side. There you go, the spring's off. Just lay it back there. <clears throat> okay, now this one 
may just pull straight up or it may pull out. Different ones do different ways. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Let's see the other carburetor. Let's see how it sits on there. If you look at this other carburetor, you see that this is a like a gasket, so it's a press fit. So really, we probably need a screwdriver and just pry that up. Flathead? Yep. Now just take a flathead screwdriver and get it under there and just pry it right up. There you go. Just set it off to the side a little bit. Now, the other one you leave on there till you take the carburetor off. It's hard to get off because it's hooked. So now all we have to do at this point is to take that bolt off and that one. There are two bolts that hold this on and hold them into this. This bolt goes all the way through. But you got to be real careful because these are plastic. Okay, it's the wrong size. Not 10 millimeter. No, it's bigger. 11. Yep, 11 millimeter socket and just twist them off. Okay, that's the, looks like that one just comes off there. And it's a stud. Sometimes they're studs, sometimes they're actual bolts that go through. That one appears to be a stud. Now I'll hold this for him. This is going to be the same deal with the other stud? Yes, yes. Alright, now, then we can take the breather off. Now, you want to be careful and not mess that little gasket up. And now it just pulls, you should be able to just pull that loose and set it, let it hang. Now, there's two yep. right there that holds the carburetor on. We want to make sure we hang on to those. And that one's a smaller. Five sixteenths. It's a five sixteenths. That's the problem with, with vehicles today. You've got to have standard and you have to have metric. And you'll notice it's unscrewing out of the thing here. So that's going to be a long stud. There it comes out. We get one, and there's one on the other side. There you go. Hold on to that carburetor because it'll flop around. Now, to release this, you have to twist the carburetor around. And some gas is liable to pour out of it, but there we go. Now, we take the, the hose off of the carburetor. And I've had to cut these before. They get very stiff. There we go. Off. Now, there is a gasket here on the back of the carburetor that we need to reserve, okay? That's a little gasket, and we'll want to reuse that. That goes right here between the breather and the carburetor. Okay, don't know what happened to our camera, but we're going to get at it. Now, there should be a gasket. Is it stuck on here? Okay, there's a gasket, and you put that gasket on, and then you, but you want to hook this first okay and then put your gasket on and fit it up to the spot now you want to put in the studs now you got to remember that this is plastic this whole housing here is plastic and if it had been a lawnmower that had been run for a long time sometimes you got to replace this plastic because it gets brittle and the screws will tear out but we're just going to tighten them, snug them down. You don't have to, what my dad would call, coal miner tight. 
you don't have to make it coal miner tight. You just have to snug them down until everything is stopped moving. And the gasket is compressed and the air is kept out. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is put the spring on right here. And you may need the little pair of pliers because it goes over, over the top. Okay, that little spring's on. Now we can put this on. It press fits. Press fits, and sometimes it'll have to have a little tap. There we go. In. And everything is connected now. Now we need to bring up the uh, breather and reconnect the hoses that go to it. They go underneath. Now, is that, wait a minute, is there a, okay, you're fine. All right. That's something, just keep big particles out. Okay. Then it goes back on, and the gasket is still there. We haven't manipulated the gasket any, so we've got two nuts to put on, one on each side. So you want to snug one down, but you don't want to snug them both down. You don't want to snug them real tight till you get everything on there, and everything looks like it's lined up like it's supposed to be. Snug them down. You gotta remember, again, we're talking about plastic. So you don't want to coal mine tighten them, but you do have to tighten them good. Now, that carburetor is now replaced, <coughs> except for we have to put this back on. So we'll have to press the clamp, we'll put it on, press the clamp. release it. And there it is. Fastened on. Now at the bottom of this carburetor there's a switch right here. This hose plugs into that. It only goes one way. See how it's shaped? Let me show you how it's shaped. See how it's shaped? It'll only fit in one way. I call them an idiot plug. Any idiot can plug them back in. So that goes in there. Good and solid? Yeah. Okay. So that carburetor is replaced now. Now, let's see if it's going to leak. Turn on the gas. Yeah. Now, when the gas thing is in line here, it's on. And looks like no leaks. So now, move your throttle cable. Move your throttle and make sure that it's going to move. No, no, no. From the, from the chair. There you go. And this is called the governor, by the way. This, this helps it. Uh, when it's cold, it opens one way. And when it's hot, another. Okay? So. Alright, so now, this should be ready to put back together. But the truth is, I'd like to start it before I put it back together. Uh, because sometimes, sometimes that stuff don't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the filter right here on it. Just set it right like that. 
and we're going to see if it'll start with this new carburetor on it. Let me get out from uh, out from in front of it. down and there it is now let's put it back together okay all done for uh, less than thirty dollars we paid a thousand dollars for the mower it's a twenty two hundred dollar mower at Lowe's but it was returned so let's see if it cranks up and then it's time for me to get on to the next thing Sounds like a mower. <laughs> 